I love emoji tattoos and I've done quite a few and I want one. I really want the bitch, you know? That's like my favorite emoji ever. What's up GQ, I'm Bang Bang. I'm a tattoo artist in New York City and today we'll be reviewing the tattoos of some of the biggest stars in the NBA and WNBA. So I've been tattooing a long time. You know, when I first started tattooing, I would have never imagined I would tattoo LeBron James or some of the great athletes that I've gotten to meet and tattoo. It's a little surreal to be here and to be able to do my work for them who've done so much work. So some of my clients are obviously LeBron, Rihanna, Justin Bieber, and Kylie Jenner, and Selena Gomez. I could go on for days. LeBron's got a bunch of tattoos. He's got a bunch of really iconic tattoos as well. I met LeBron five, six years ago through a mutual friend who's in his close circle and they work on the shop together and he was vetting me to make sure I'm, you know, cool to be in the circle. And so LeBron flew me to his house in, when he was in Cleveland. We tattooed in his basement. I did a portrait of his daughter when she was about two years old. Some of the things about LeBron's tattoos is we can't tell what every one of them are because some of them are older, some of them are cover-ups. As we talked through all his tattoos, he really loved his tattoos. He has something on his chest that I just remember him explaining it was terribly painful. He did pretty good on his low shoulder blade when I tattooed him. Little peek in the future, he wants a, a lion on his finger like mine. I think my favorite tattoo on LeBron, other than the one I did, of course, is Chosen One. I think there's something really poetic in embracing the pressure, and I think no one in the history of sports has had the pressure that LeBron James has. He was the chosen one when he was in eighth grade. Everybody knew he'd be great, and that's a really hard thing to live up to, so I love LeBron's Chosen One tattoo most. Allen Iverson's style was one of a kind, and still is. There was a lot of controversy surrounding Allen Iverson's tattoos. In early on in his career, the marketing ads and even toys that kids would buy, they didn't have any tattoos, although he did. And this was a really large point of contention. Not only did Allen Iverson have lots of tattoos, but he had his neck tattooed, he had his hands tattooed. Even still now, it's a touch taboo, but not nearly what it was then. Allen Iverson was a superstar in the late 90s and early 2000s when no one had tattoos, especially NBA players and athletes in general. Really, he was the most famous, most tattooed person for a long period of time. Now we see many NBA players that look like this, but at the time we didn't. So he's really the godfather of style to this community of people who love, adore, and play basketball in the NBA. Well, it looks to me like if it doesn't have wings, Melo doesn't want it. I love his theme of black, gray, red. These work really well. They work well on his skin tone. If LaMelo says he's done, I don't believe him. To be honest, I'm done. I'm gonna get a call next week. I'm just only gonna get like little tats, if anything. 70% of the adverse events that happen or are recorded in tattooing are from red ink. What the reason is, is a little scientific and you know, probably based on immune response and sensitivity to the particle. The body is constantly breaking down our pigments throughout our life. Red ink can have inflammation or irritation years after you get it. So it's really based on your own biology, your own biochemistry and your immune response to the pigment. There's also colors like purple and purple has a lot of reds in it. Most of the reactions happen because of red. If it's my vote, he's, he's got work to do. But they look good. I like that he's got good ones. His brother's got better ones. The artist that made Lonzo Ball's tattoos really specializes in color, actually. One of the most impressive things he's ever done in black and gray is on Lonzo with this civil rights tattoo. Obama, Malcolm X, Martin Luther King. What's really most beautiful about Lonzo's tattoos, again, is we can tell what it is right away. We can tell who it is right away. And there's a theme through his whole arm. It's not a mishmash of styles or subjects. It's done so large and we see these 
these players so small on TV, we still can tell what it is. This is a really, really well done tattoo. These will never need touch-ups. They're done in such great contrast and they're done at a scale so large that when Lonzo's in his 50s and 60s, we'll still be able to identify who these people are. The brain has this way of understanding things that are even very blurry. It's kind of like this skill set. We recognize faces, especially in iconic photography. We know these images as much as we know these faces. We know these shots, we know this photography. And so it will always connect for people. On his other arm, this kind of gates of heaven and scripture, I really like that because again, we have one body part that has one theme and that's something that really speaks to me and it's well thought out. Luca's got some great ones. You're never gonna regret an animal tattoo. You might regret your girlfriend or boyfriend's name, but good choice there. I like the symmetry of his eagle and his all-seeing eye a lot. And his tiger is really well done. Luca's one of the people I really want to tattoo, so call me. J.R. Smith might have been the most tattooed NBA player ever. We had to like really try to find space for J.R. to tattoo him. He was that tattooed and he was that tattooed early in his career. When he played for the Knicks, I would tattoo him all the time, but it was never anything big. They even made a t-shirt out of J.R. Smith's tattoos that became very famous because he's so iconic. And he's one of the only athletes that I know of that have the Jordan logo. And I remember I was at Amari Stoudemire's house once and you know, Iman Shumper was there there and Mello and JR was on the team at the same time. Iman Shumper was like, man, I, you know, I, I want to get a, a Jordan logo. Amari Stoudemire was like, why? And he's like, what do you mean why? It's Jordan. He goes, man, man get your own logo. <laughs> and he didn't get it. And I'll never forget that. This kind of like, don't glorify anybody, glorify yourself. That was a cool conversation I got to witness. But specifically to JR, I don't know if anybody's more tattooed than JR. I mean, down to every finger, every knuckle, every bit of him is tattooed. Young money. He's old money now. We're the same age. I think my favorite thing about Brittany Griner's tattoos is, is the color work, the flowers. So there's a balance in her design. There's this delicate side of her arm, and then there's this more aggressive side. So it's not just a lion, it's a lion roaring, which probably speaks to a lot of who she is as a person. There's certainly this, you know, delicate nature to this person, and there's certainly this aggressive nature, this competitive athlete. She's also got symmetry, a lion and a skull. These are aggressive imagery. And then birds, flowers, color. It's really stark contrast between the two. I like her style. John Morant's got what looks to me like small ones first and then decided, all right, it's sleeve time. David Beckham, very famous cloud tattoos. This cloud work filler of a sleeve style. It's a quick, easy way to get it done. It really looks great on him. He avoided his ditch, the bend in his arm, and his elbow, which is a smart move. The inside of the arm at the ditch and the elbow are probably the most painful parts. If someone has a lot of tattoos and they're kind of patchwork and they really want to go full sleeve, clouds, filler, smoke, motion, these are all ways to fill the gaps. Generally, when I'm designing a sleeve from scratch, I'm thinking about the shape more from the start than you'll see in people who get tattoos in this style, like Ja. So Ja probably got a cross and he got a piece at the top of his arm and his inner bicep and inner forearm, and then that was it. I would recommend usually to design your sleeve from start, but it's not always the case. What I really like about Ja's tattoos is we can tell what they are right away. And I think that's a really important thing that gets lost sometimes. Steven Adams is a monster. One of the most intimidating players to ever play in the NBA. I think the tattoos add to it a little bit. I like the consistency of his theme. It looks like he had a couple before he did these sleeves. His bicep has an image, his forearm has a word. Beyond that, even the ones that are there were made really cohesive with this design. Another thing I really like about this design, if you look around the midsection of his arm towards his elbow, that motion goes with the body. So as he bends that motion, it actually increases. It doesn't move against the natural motion of the body which is something I really love with successful tattooing. I love Kobe Bryant and I love his tattoos. Kobe's tattoos are really iconic as well because we learned about Kobe and we knew Kobe and we loved Kobe so much, really identifying person. And then he showed up with a tattoo and that was cool. It wasn't something we expected to see from Kobe, but it was also something delicate, this 
crown, butterflies. And then he kept getting tattooed and every one of his tattoos were a tribute to someone he loved. We can tell really easily what's most important to Kobe Bryant through his tattoos. I think it's really beautiful that many NBA players have gotten tattoos to Kobe as him being one of the most important people to them. There's some poetry there. My favorite thing about Courtney Williams' tattoo is there's a theme, right side. And then I noticed she's got one tattoo on her left shoulder there. And I was like, oh man, almost perfect. I'm sure she'll continue getting tattooed and that'll balance, but her peace sign's really dope. Similar to what Allen Iverson did in the NBA, Courtney Williams is kind of having some of that influence now in the WNBA as well. We don't see a lot of WNBA players heavily tattooed, but Courtney's one of them. She's got a dope style. Well, her lion tattoo is dope. And she's even got her hand tattooed, so she's in the club. How bad do you think that knee tat hurt? Knee tattoos are serious, just in general. If you get a knee tattoo that's big, solid black, you're tough. She's tougher than me, that's for sure. What I really love about Dame's tattoos, especially the one on his left-hand side, we're seeing the scripture is that angle moves with his body. So it actually creates a shape. We're never gonna sit down and be able to read Dame's tattoo. As far as imaging goes, it creates a really unique shape and image and frame of him. And so I love this tattoo of this scripture on his arm. You see what I'm saying? How that angle changes with his body motion and it all points to his center point. I really think that's beautiful. It looks like Dame got a lot of tattoos throughout his life. Maybe at multiple periods, but the consistency of how they're tied together is really well. We call it filler, right? And so it's not any one thing. It's just background. Sometimes it's noise, sometimes it's cloud, sometimes it's motion or just gray shading to frame the image for the eye. I love Dame's tattoos. His chest tattoo is pretty intricate. It's beautiful. Jordan Clarkson's a baller. The first thing that I see is this symmetrical portraits. I'm not sure who they are, but I'm, I'll know that those people are most important to him. So as you look down, these people are right here. And that's part of his identity. What's the viewing angle of people? And how do they view you? What's your head on image? And having two portraits right there says a lot about him. Praying hands, he's got Nipsey, he's got a couple of portraits. I like his gambler tattoo a lot. This is cool. He's got a bobblehead superhero son figure. It's cute. I would bet they were done at separate times. I bet he had his portrait of his son done and then he's like, let me make him a little superhero. Dude, he's heavily tattooed. There's not a spot left on this arm. Maybe his thumb. He's got his fingers tattooed, his hands tattooed. He's what we call full. Kevin Durant has my favorite nickname ever, Slim Reaper. Kevin Durant ever came to me and said, what should I get? I'd say, you have to get a Reaper tattoo. It's cold and that's just the coldest nickname ever. His torso is heavily tattooed and yeah, you wouldn't guess it. Kevin does a lot of things outside the NBA too. And so in business, and maybe that's part of his image that he wants to keep, you know, more clean cut. But he's pretty heavily tattooed on his stomach. I don't often see people getting hidden tattoos. It's almost like people want to see them and they want people to see them. It's almost like this, what would I externalize that I feel internally? And so that's almost a lot of the reason why people get tattooed. So to see somebody who's heavily tattooed, but it's all very private, speaks to who Kevin Durant is. He is kind of private. He is kind of reserved. This speaks to his style. I've never seen a Heath Ledger Joker tattoo. I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm totally kidding. I've seen it a lot, I've seen it a lot. But it's cool, it speaks to that amazing actor who's not with us anymore and the impact he had. I really like DeMar DeRozan's Joker tattoo and I like the symmetry of both of his arms are, are tattooed with portraits. So that's again, plays to the balance of the body. They fit his jersey well, they fit his body well. He's got great shape and great tattoos to match. A lot of these, it looks like, although he has a sleeve, they weren't planned cohesively. So he's got a bunch of different subject matter and has filled spots, but he's done it well. I think Richard Jefferson got this when he was like 16. Cause I have a goofy tattoo just like this one. That's what we all do. It's like, all right, what would I get and not regret? Well, me, love me some me. But it's cool, it's part of his image now. I think he's such a polished guy. It's strange that he has a tattoo almost to begin with. And then he doesn't have many. So if he was covered in tattoos, this RJ wouldn't stick out at all, right? LeBron's got LJ on him. Jordan's got Clarkson on his back. It's consistent and common. And the only reason it sticks out to us is it's 
it's the only one. A great tattoo will define you. And so we find this exists throughout all sports, throughout all celebrities. Think of Rihanna's hand tattoo. We saw it in Super Bowl ads. It was just her hand, but we knew who it was. So if we saw this tattoo and we didn't see Richard Jefferson, we'd still know who it is. And so if that connection is made, I always think it's a great tattoo. Advice to young players would be, if you're going to get tattooed, get great tattoos. You can find great artists, you have access to great artists. They all want to tattoo you, they want to do something great for you. Don't be the designer of your tattoo. Find somebody who's so great at tattooing and designing tattoos and then speak about your idea and come up with a plan that's going to look great visually. NBA players are great at playing in the NBA. Sometimes they're not great at designing tattoos and so leverage an artist's skill set. Let them help you design something Something that'll be iconic and timeless and you'll enjoy your tattoo forever thanks for watching i'll see you next time